I've given my heart to this agency. I have made tough decisions. But I leave this agency knowing that it is better than when I found it. In the first months of our administration, we came to learn that NYCHA was on the brink of bankruptcy. Someone had to fix it. Someone had to be brave enough to step forward. Shola and her team did that. Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jenna Flanagan. That was former NYCHA head Shola Olotoye announcing her resignation at a press conference yesterday with Mayor de Blasio at her side continuing to lavish praise on the disgraced former leader of the Housing Authority despite recent improvements. The cost will be, as the mayor said, billions. But, but what about the human toll? As part of our Chasing the Dream initiative, poverty, opportunity, and inequality in America, we wanted to speak with the people who live in NYCHA housing and what can only be described as, for many, squalid conditions, unsuitable for habitation. Well, joining me with the Metro Focus exclusive to help answer that question is NYCHA resident and founder of Public Housing Communities, Charlene Nimmons. Charlene, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So first, I just want to get your reaction to uh, Olotoye's stepping down. So, you know, she had an opportunity to come in and make some real significant changes, mm -hmm. and that didn't happen. So I'm OK. I think we're OK with her not being there right now. Um, and we're looking to see what the new leadership is going to well, so then, of course, that brings the next question, because given the fact that Mayor de Blasio was the one who chose Olatoye, how much faith does the NYCHA community have in his ability to choose someone better the second time around? When we cried out and asked them to make the changes, mm -hmm. um, they didn't hear our voices. If it wasn't for people like you, you know, Metro Focus and other media outlets, they would have already gone back and sat down and been status, you know, the status quo, the same as usual. And so um, we're now saying time has changed and we need to make sure that the voices of the residents are heard. Well, how does that work, making sure that the NYCHA residents' voices are heard? Are we talking about making sure that people have a seat at the table, having some input in whoever the next person to head the agency I is? I believe it's a combination, right, that we need to be at the seat of the table, at the table, because it's important for the new person to come in that they don't repeat the same things that Shola did, the same things that Mia de Blasio did, and that was not listening. And when you say that they weren't listening to you, that the um, de Blasio administration and by extension uh, Shola were not listening to you, what exactly do you mean by that? I mean, on continual, uh, you know, on a continuum, we have sent letters, we've uh, spoken to them directly um, when they made these decisions to bring on next gen, which I still call infill. Um, when they talk about building on our parking lots, when they talk about um, all of these new initiatives, you're not hearing us. We're saying to you that there are better ways and you're not listening to the people who live it every day. This is not something that's new. We've been talking to the elected officials. We've been talking to HUD. We've been talking to uh, NYCHA for years, saying that there needed to be repairs. The, the funding needed to increase. Um, fortunately, we are seeing it happen now. But the question is, where were you when all of this deterioration was happening? It didn't just happen. It's been going on for years. Well, it's interesting that you mention elected officials because, of course, this is campaign season in New York. And we've seen Governor Cuomo come down and do a tour of uh, public housing in New York. And we've also seen his uh, primary rival, Cynthia Nixon, do something similar. How does it feel to have these uh, people who are running for office make it a point to come to NYCHA houses and sort of shine a light? Do you feel like your voices are being heard, or do you feel like you're being exploited? Myself and others are not pleased with the parade of taking residents around as pawns in their elections. Well, as we know, uh, that the state has allocated at least some money, I believe $250 million, for repairs at NYCHA houses. And I'm wondering, what is the one thing that residents need to see getting done to let them know that not only are their voices being heard, but at least some of their concerns are being taken seriously? I think it's going to be real important to start with 
the boilers. Um, waiting four years is just, it doesn't make sense. And waiting two years, right? Because then later they came back, NYCHA changed the, the timetable. Uh, I think it's gonna be really crucial to make sure that people could at least have warm homes and have hot water. Uh, so starting with the boiler uh, conversions or replacements is going to be key and important. That's going to show whether uh, they've taken us serious or not. All right, well, Charlene, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the program and to give us the perspective that somehow has been left out of this conversation, the voices of NYCHA residents. And of course, we'll be following to see if your voices are heard as the search moves forward for a new head of the agency. I thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak, and I'm looking forward to you keeping your eye on what's going on. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs>